Welcome back everybody. So uh, it's obviously Monday for us today. Yesterday, Sunday, was 42 degrees on the farm. Very, very, very warm. So <laughs> today's 30, this whole week isn't too bad. It's around those uh, that mid to high 20s, so fairly good. Henry this morning, he is out finishing off the rock picking. He's gonna finish that this morning. So his ute's there, he'll be driving the Manny back up once he's done. And then this afternoon, we're gonna chuck the cage onto the, uh, the, uh, the spreader. So whilst Henry is out doing all the, uh, the rock picking, I have got, as you can see, I've got two new storage boxes. So this is gonna be for in the shed here and maybe one for in the bar and grill to replace the broken cupboard in there. And this is basically just to neaten up that whole pile in there, just make it a lot neater. Um, try and stop everything from coming out. We've got a lot of stuff at the bottom that's all coming out because we're just running out of storage space. So that's what these are for. So once, well, I've got that. And this morning I've got uh, Luke, our new agronomist, he's rocking up this morning, so he's coming out to uh, say hello and uh, get acquainted. We're gonna go across uh, soil sampling results, get that all sorted. Uh, I believe I'm gonna do some lime, I'm gonna chat with him about that, see what he recommends. Uh, this morning also, I'm trying to purchase a truck. Uh, been trying to call the dealer that I was dealing with and they're not answering the phone, which is uh, just typical, but that's all right. But uh, if that one falls through, there's a private sale one that I've got my eye on, which is a uh, equally as good truck. So they're both on the other side of Australia. So I'll get back to you hopefully uh, after lunch with uh, the result of what we're gonna, if we've got one. So when I say stuff is just coming out on the bottom, this is what I mean. We just, we run out of space here. So we're just dumping on the ground and it's coming out. So what I wanna do is just try and clean this all up, make it a lot neater, uh, just make it better and then uh, pull out these toolboxes, that one off the bench, put that one in, you know, wherever I'm gonna put it, maybe I'll slide the fridge across. And this one comes in here just so that I can then pull this one out when I would like to have it out. Uh, so yeah, that's, well, and then just continue on with tidying this workshop. Uh, now Starlink, Starlink is working. Uh, it didn't, well, it, I mean, it was uh, only giving us 30 megabytes a second, which is, yeah, it's still good, but yeah, it's Starlink. You should be getting over 100. Uh, so I've still left that one where it is. But what I did with, um, with up, up top on the satellite, because uh, it wasn't, wasn't turning around, so uh, what I did was I just flipped it. So it's now, instead of, it, when you go to stow it, it was facing down like this. So now I've just flipped it around, so it's, when I stow it, it's now facing that way, which is the correct way for the satellites. Sensory working. I just did a test then. I've got 168 megabytes a second. So, yeah, Starlink is uh, it's amazing. It has just made our business so much easier to run and live out here in, uh, with uh, affordable and reliable internet. Right. Don't have Henry here to do a race with because you know, we've got two of them. Are you going to do one? Are you going to do one? Next step is to uh, decide how high and the spaces I want around my shelves. So I've got four shelves and then they're just attached by uh, simply that. <laughs> Pretty dodgy, <laughs> but I guess that works. Um, yeah. 
Well, that's handy. I've been given one less mounting bracket. Or is it hidden on the bottom shelf? Thanks, Bunnings. Terrific. Yeah. Cheers. Oh, here's the truck. Got my shelving on, apart from uh, the bottom there. I'm missing one of the, uh, the little attachments. The uh, was never packed, or I've lost it. I don't know where it could have gone, but uh, it's not here. I've uh, left the bottom one out because I can just chuck something on, like a block of wood underneath there and it'll be fine. Uh, so we'll sort that out and if I find it, I'll chuck it in. Uh, but yeah, that phone call just before, that was the dealer uh, that has fallen through. Uh, there, I mean, hasn't fallen through, but it's fallen through. The, the truck is still available, but it's just a bit harder uh, to get it. Uh, so just called up the private guy and we're, uh, I'm just waiting to hear back from him. So. Yeah, we'll see how we go. It's uh, fingers crossed. Um, we'll, uh, yeah, I'll report back. I should have the, I should have Luke here very shortly though. So I'll be going through that. And then, uh, yeah, we will uh, know if we've got a truck or not. Just like that. We've got ourselves a cupboard. Problem is you do have to use a key every time to uh, keep, it, keep it closed, which is a bit annoying. And there you go, that's it. So uh, that should make uh, life a bit easier, having, um, having that all stored away in there. So what I'm thinking, that one will come over here and that will replace this shelf here. This shelf is uh, definitely not weighted for, <laughs> for what's on it. Um, all these turnbuckles, uh, we don't use anything that has turnbuckles anymore. Those were for like the boom spray or the old sonic boom spray and stuff that we used to have. So all this is going to head up to the loft anyway. I don't need it here. Uh, and then yeah, I can just start to clean it up, make it look a bit neater. Uh, and then I'll decide where that other one's going to go. When I'm at the other one, if that goes in here, can we take away one of these tubs? Maybe store it in there a bit nicer. Who knows? Alrighty, well we're back from lunch. Uh, Henry's obviously back with uh, Manny. He's finished up all the rock picking. Now we do have all of Hatton's still to do, but Hatton's actually doesn't have that many rocks in there, so not too fussed about that. Uh, we're gonna get this cage on now and then get that all sorted. Uh, the truck, we have um, verbally agreed to it. Just waiting to hear back from old mate about a few things. It's a bit noisy. Um, so, the, tr the truck is all but confirmed and ready to roll. Just uh, trying to sort out um, picking it up and you know, uh, flying over, that sort of thing. Uh, so a few of you are probably wondering, you know, why not just get, chuck it on the back of a, a truck and bring it over, surely that'd be cheaper. Um, well, it actually doesn't work out cheaper having it go on the back of a truck. It'll be pretty much damn near the same cost. Just wait for this to start up. It'd be pretty much the same amount getting it shipped over to us driving it over, you know, flying over, driving, fuel, all that. Uh, and the reason I'm not too overly fond of throwing it on the back of a truck to come over here is uh, we've been burnt before with doing that. So I bought Wally, and this is how Wally got its name, uh, back during COVID. And the dealer lined up uh, this truck driver or this truck company to bring this truck over for me. They, no worries. It's a bit dodgy. He did ask for payment up front. We paid him up front, and then uh, it was meant to. Like, so it was meant to arrive on a Saturday or a Sunday. Let's say it was meant to arrive on a Sunday. So Dad and I drove up to Perth on a Saturday. Then we're going to bring it back down Sunday. We were up there for nearly a week waiting for this truck. Uh, it got to the point that we, uh, an old mate, wouldn't answer phone calls, wouldn't text back, wouldn't do anything. 
couldn't get a hold of him or his driver. Uh, then we, it was the morning, Dad and I were like, right, well, we got to, let's just say it was Wednesday and can't get a hold of this guy. Uh, he's already taken the money. He's got the, he's, he had the truck, the truck had already been picked up. And uh, we're like, right, well, if we haven't heard from him in the morning, we're gonna go to the place. So the next morning we woke up, we had breakfast, hadn't heard from him. And quite literally on our way to the police station, we got a phone call because um, obviously he'd read the messages or listened to the message or whatever. And uh, miraculously, the driver had, you know, oh no, it's all right, it's here, it's here, we got it, and all this. And yeah, so we've been burnt trying to uh, get a truck over on the back of a truck before. So yeah, not doing that again. So that's why we're going to fly over. I know that you guys have questions about that. Uh, and uh, yeah, Henry, well, I've, I've driven the Nullarbor. I've gone uh, across to South Australia. Never gone from Sydney, so this truck's in Sydney, so we're quite literally going from coast to coast. Uh, it's about three and a half thousand k's we're gonna be doing. Uh, but yeah, Henry hasn't driven across Australia. I haven't driven that far across Australia, so it should be uh, quite an adventure for us. And uh, obviously, we're gonna bring you guys along with us. So Henry's just busy blowing out the uh, air filter and the radiator from Manny because of all the dust that he's been picking up with the rocks. Just uh, yeah, getting that back to uh, being fresh and back to uh, square one. Now, a few of you might not know why we put a cage on. Uh, obviously, you don't need to put a cage on with lime or with uh, urea or anything like that. So why are we putting a cage on for gypsum? Uh, the reason is that uh, the gypsum pit isn't... Uh, basically, they, they rip it and then they push it up. Uh, they don't... Uh, it's not screened. So when it comes to us, we can have uh, rocks from, I don't know, like that size to football size, because uh, it's on a lake. Uh, there can also be tree roots and stuff in it. So we put a cage on that will let all the small stuff drop in and all the big stuff just rolls off and then we can sort it out later and deal with it. But uh, yeah, we obviously don't want the big stuff going in because it'll block up our, our doors. And if it can somehow get through the door, it will then do a lot of damage when it comes to getting on the fins. So, uh, yeah, that's why we put a cage on. Of course, we're going to need our bolts, and we've got a very uh, unique way of identifying our bolts. Wrap them up in a bit of silo bag, and uh, there you go, you got it. So I'll get a, uh, all the sockets and everything ready to go. So I'm going to drop it on, we can just straight away look into it. Just taking my uh, my cage and telehandler for a walk. <laughs> See what the steel's hot. Should put my gloves on.
It's done. Yeah. So it's all done. Cage is on. Uh, so you can see what I mean by the cage. It just will stop any large rocks or anything like that from falling into the uh, the hopper. So the last two things we're going to do. Henry's just off to grab a receiver. The receiver on here is SF1. Uh, we need a SF3 receiver so that we're not winding all over the place. And I am about to just start this up, do a dry run so you can prime it, and that's how you get it all out to the uh, the length of the, the wings there. So I'm just gonna do that, prime it, make sure the belts work, because we have had it one year where it didn't work and it held us up for a little bit. So just gonna make sure that we're all ready to roll. So just going into here, which uh, is fast emptying or priming. Got my hydraulics on, and we're away. And not that you guys can probably see, but the belt here is spinning, and both of those belts up there on the wings are spinning. We are all good to roll. So, hang on, turn that off. There is one more thing that we need to do. Uh, well, it's not too bad. Because we put a cage on, it's different weight. Obviously, we're adding weight to it, so we there's a function somewhere in here <laughs> that you can uh, reset it, but you've got to be careful because we have done it wrong before where we've reset it and we've reset the whole thing. Uh, but this is only saying 100 kilos on the back, so yeah, it's um, actually pretty good. I managed to tear it. I didn't have the camera on because I was, wasn't sure what was going to happen, but uh, I managed to tear it. So the actual weight now is zero and I still left the load value weight, which is that one there. If I go back to my working man, we're at zero kilos. So this now is officially ready to roll. So I'll park it away. We're still waiting on Brian. He will be, I assume, Thursday. So we'll get two day, well, one day of gypsum spreading because Australia Day is on Friday. And uh, yeah, we'll get back to it when we get back uh, over this side of the country. So the uh, next thing we're gonna do, uh, tomorrow I've got my ute booked in town to go and get uh, some new tires put on. I popped a tire when I was at the fires and just, I need some new tyres, so I'm doing that. But I'm also going to be getting some logbooks for myself and Henry because uh, we need logbooks to drive this truck back from the eastern states to here, along with permits and all that. But I'll sort that out tomorrow morning. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're dropping this trailer off and we're going to hook onto the Howard Porter, just the rock trailer next door, and uh, take this out. We've got one big rock pile that's left out in uh, this paddock that's uh, right here near the, next to the sheds. And uh, we figured we might as well just remove it. So yeah, Henry will do that tomorrow and we'll get uh, Manny out there as well, like now, with the, uh, with the rock bucket as well. So he's got that for cleaning up at the end because you'll see when we get out there, it's a, it's a large rock pile that needs, um, needs Manny to uh, help finish it off.
truck's just a little bit low on oil, so Henry's uh, just gone to grab the uh, oil jug. Uh, but whilst uh, he's coming down, we are getting gypsum. It's happening Thursday morning uh, is when the truck should arrive out here. So from Thursday on, we should have uh, some gypsum being carted, which is nice. Uh, and then with Luke this morning, uh, we're going to do maybe 300 hectares of, uh, of lime. Um, so yeah, we'll probably be ordering about 500 ton of lime and um, yeah, see how that goes. So we'll uh, have all that to look forward to when we're, uh, yeah, in, well, going into February basically. Dexter, come here. Yeah, you're right. Dexter. You're right, keep coming. Just hold there. There's only like a, about that much like of a gap. I'll just wind it down. So we've still got quite a few rock piles out here. There's this one here, there's one just there, and there's also one on the horizon. The one on the horizon will stay. I reckon Henry will get that one just there as well. And I'll show you where I can pull around. Blow my window down. So that's all it is. It's just rocks that were pushed up and then uh, well, raked, raked up and then uh, they all dumped them there when uh, you know when they were clearing the block um, I think we sort of left it because on the other side there's a bit of a swamp hole but I just want to get rid of it I hate having rough piles as you can see weeds grow on it it's just a harboring area for resistance so uh, yeah Henry will make light work of that and clean that right up So we've now got uh, both Louis and Manny out here. So tomorrow Henry's got both the machines he needs in order to get the job done. Uh, I'll be here probably in the morning just to help him out and then I'll be heading to town to get this thing's wheels changed and uh, the books. Uh, so I reckon I'll leave the video there. Um, yeah, we're just gonna go back to the shed and keep on making uh, those cabinets and probably shuffle them around a bit. And uh, yeah, it's still up in the air with this truck. I. Um, I'll let you guys know in the next video. Hopefully I'll know what's going on there and hopefully it's good news and then I can finally book some uh, book some flights to go over and pick that up. So I'll uh, update you guys that one on the next video but for uh, this video that's it. So I shall catch you in the next one.